So this is section 3.5, and it's just about um, linear relationships, relationships that make a straight line. So um, we've talked a little bit about these before when we've been talking about slope. So when we were talking about slope, we had like some table, something like this. Um, and we were asked to find the slope between the tables. So um, between the points in the table. A linear relationship will always have the same slope. The slope's the same. So if I look at the way that this is changing, notice my change in x is 1. And my change in y has to, happens to be 3 here. So this would have a, a slope. Remember, change in y over change in x, which is always the same, which would be um, 3 over 1, which is, which is just 3. So I can tell if, that a relationship is linear in the table if this ratio is always, this, always, always the same. Let me add one thing here. Let's say that this went up to 6. Um, the next entry was 6 instead of 4. And then um, this, was a, this was a 24. Would my relationship still be linear? Well... Let's see, this is this right here is changing by 2, and this is changing by 6. And if I think about that change in y over change in x, 6 over 2, that's still 3. So yeah, even though I, I might have, like, feels like I skipped a piece of data in there or something like that, as long as the ratio, change in y over change in x, is the same, then my relationship is linear. So a couple things I'll ask you to do with, with linear relationships. One of them is just like a straight work problem. Like let's say that you uh, or someone got paid $17 an hour. And then they were asked to fill in this, this table. Um, number of hours worked and uh, pay. And then this part's going to be filled in. So let's figure this out. If you don't work any hours, the pay would be zero. Getting paid $17 an hour, every time this goes up by one, this is gonna go up by 17. So this would be one hour for 17. Two hours, it's gonna be plus another 17. You do it in your head or on your calculator or whatever, you get 34. The next one goes up by another 17. 51. Uh, this one goes up by another 17, and you get 68. And it would just keep keep going. Oops, I re I said 68, and I wrote 67. Sorry, 68. Um, and it would just keep going this way. And this sort of relationship is kind of easy, you know, because like 10 hours, I could keep the table going, or I could just say, well, 10 hours, $17 an hour, $170, right? Time time 17 in this way. So filling in a table like this. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Um, another thing that you might get asked to do, <laughs> might, you will get asked to do, is you have a table started for you already. Uh, let's say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, something like that. And then it's like 7. How about negative 2, 0, 2. And then it asks you to fill in the rest of the blanks. Well, all you have to do is like find the pattern that's going on here. So notice that this is adding two as this side is adding one. So this would keep adding two. So this would be four, six, and eight. Uh, you might see another situation like this where the data is different. So let's do another example like this. And we need to fill in the blanks. So again, uh, this one's x is changing by one. Let's look at what y is changing by. This is plus eight. This is plus eight again. So we're going to assume that that pattern uh, keeps going on. So add eight to get 45. Add eight again to get 53. Add eight one more time to get 61. 
Great. So uh, we have a couple of things that we've talked about. One of them is what is a linear relationship? How to generate a table if we know the rate, basically know the slope, how it's changing. Or if I give you a partial table, you should be able to fill in the rest of the table. Uh, two more things I want to talk about. One of them is this idea of if I give you a partial table, so let's say this was negative 3, negative 1, and 1, and then there were these blanks, and you're going to have a graph. And um, on the quiz, it's not going to, you're not going to have a space to fill these in. You're just going to have to figure them out. What I want you to do is graph these, what these points would be if this uh, table keeps going. So as I look for this pattern, I'm seeing that it's plus two. It's just, it just looks like it's adding by two each time. So I might have to do this on scratch paper or something like that if I was taking the actual quiz because it's not going to be able to do it on the quiz. Uh, looks like that would be a three, five, and a seven. So then I would graph the point. So three, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, four, one, two, three, four, five, five, seven, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, maybe I'll show you the graph for. So notice the question looks like this. And then you're supposed to graph the points. And I'm not going to solve this one, but what's great is with this, you can put dots on the graph. So you would figure out where you want the dots to go and just graph them on there and then submit it. And notice you can clear them all if you feel like you're making mistakes too. So put the dots on and you know get it as close as you can, but it's it's reasonably forgiving, and then hit submit on uh, for doing that one. Great. Okay, one more idea that I want to that I want to talk about. And they are for a problem that looks like this. Uh, there's a place, we'll call it the club. Um, you have two options for, for buying things when you, when you go to the club. And one of them is you pay a, a fee of $17.50, just a flat fee to get in. And then everything costs, uh, each item in there would cost $32 if you pay the fee. Now, if you don't want to do that, um, you can just go and buy stuff for $35.50. Each item will cost $35.50. So uh, two options, pay a $17.50 kind of admission fee, and then everything's $32. Each thing is $32. Or don't pay that fee, but each thing is $35. And I said $0.35. Cents. I meant to say $0.50. Cents. Sorry about that. Um, so, you know, it's pretty obvious, like if I'm just going to buy one thing, I'm going to take option two. Like I wouldn't pay the fee and then pay $32 for the item. But like, let's say I was paying, buying a hundred things. If I was buying a hundred things. This is probably going to be a better deal than that. Uh, let's see, 32 times a hundred, right? Because 32 item, 30, hundred items at $32 each plus the 17 would that be cheaper than a hundred things at thirty-five fifty? And I could just do that on my calculator. Thirty-two times a hundred plus seventeen fifty. This would cost me. I don't have more money than this. I mean, I'm most everything ever. Um, and this one times a hundred would cost me thirty-five fifty. So that would be cheaper. If I was buying a hundred items, I'd go that route. So my question that I'm curious about is, where's the break-even point? In other words, how many items would I need to purchase um, so that the cost was the same? Like if two people go into this place and um, that I'm calling the club, if two people go into this place and one person pays the fee, the other person doesn't pay the fee, they both have spent, have bought the same number of items, and they spent the exact same amount of money. How many items must they have each bought? 
So these are both linear. So I could make a graph of this. If I had graph paper, I could be like, I pay a $17.50 fee, and then I go over one, up 32, over one, up 32, and I just make my line like this. And on this one, 35.50, no fee, but over one, up 32.50, that'll be a little bit steeper, and I could figure out where the lines cross. So I could solve it that way. Uh, I could do it with a table too, right? Like um, fee, no fee. Items. So if I buy zero items, the fee is seventeen fifty, uh, but the no fee hasn't paid any yet. If I buy one item, notice that um, the the fee this will only go up by thirty two, but the no fee would go up by thirty five fifty. You know, each time I I buy an extra item. So if I do that, one item for this person would cost $35.50, or this case, and one item for this one would be $32 for the item plus the $17.50, $49.50. And what I could do is just walk it out, right? Three items, four items, five items, keep adding 32s, keep adding 35.50s, and you'll notice that eventually this will catch up to that. And I want to know when will they be the same. I don't know that it happens at five. I don't think it does. But when would when would those prices be the same? So there's one way to do it. Here's another way to do it. If you can think of a shorter, kind of quicker way to do it, try it out. I'm not going to show it to you quite yet. But this approach might have given you a, a hint on how to do it. So I'm going to ask you this question a couple times on the assignment. And I want you to, to power it out figure it out which route you want to go, or maybe come up with your own route for it. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, and good luck on the assignment.